It's Wish Week here at the Epic Storm. Earlier this week, we uploaded Modern Twiddle Storm with Wish and then Modern Gift Storm with Wish. Today, we are playing Ruby Storm featuring Wish from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. What a crazy name, Dungeons and Dragons, all that good stuff. My last Ruby Storm video, which you can check out on the card above, was an idea of Abuse a Galvanic Relay within Ruby Storm. A bunch of you didn't like it, that's fine. Uh, sometimes you have to push the boundaries in order to create innovation. We're doing a little bit of that here today. I've done something that I think probably needs to happen for this deck to continue growing, and that's cutting Manamorphose. Some of you might not like this, and I understand why. Manamorphose is crucial for, for creating Blue Blue for Echo of Aeons. I can't talk right now. It's been a theme. Uh, but yeah, Blue Blue for Echo. That said, it's a pretty bad card most of the time. Yes, it can be a, des or a desperate ritual if you have a Ruby Medallion in play or a Burgi, but it's pretty underwhelming most of the time, and I think that's fair to say. Instead of running a card that's a little underwhelming, we're just going to run better cards in our deck. And by that, I mean all of our business spells are now Haymakers. Burning Wish, Burgi, Jessica's Will, Wish, Reforge, Echo. We're running straight gas. That's what I'm trying to say here is every card in our deck is really good at the moment. We're not running any filler, no Manamorphose, none of that garbage. So this deck is all just Haymakers at the moment, which just means if any spell resolves, your opponent's in trouble. That's what you want out of a combo deck. And in order to make that happen, we cut Manamorphose in order to add in Wish. A bunch of Rubies from Melissa recently have gotten away from Seething Song and they're just relying on Jessica's Well, I think that's sort of a mistake. Um, in my last video, I ran a list without Seething Song that was to maximize Relay, but in general, I think it's a mistake because relying on Jessica's Will as a super ritual means that if your opponent mulligans really low, it hurts you. Uh, you can't accelerate into Burgi or uh, Reforge as well. It's just not the best move in my opinion. And by playing Seething Song, you actually open Jessica's Will up to not having to be a super ritual. You can use it as an action spell if need be. So it gives Jessica's Will that flexibility back that it was losing. That's one thing that I'm trying to do here today. Fiery Eyelid is back. Uh, it can help cast the flashback in Echo or the front half. Same thing with the Opal. I almost consider it a 2-2 split uh, because we're getting to the point where we don't have a whole lot of cards we want to imprint on this Chrome Mox. But I feel like our artifact count might not be high enough, especially with moving one of the defense grids to the board for a wish. Yeah, but I thought about it just so that way we could uh, more easily create the blue-blue that we lost from Morphos. I don't have a strong opinion on this, but I will say this. A lot of lists recently have been playing City of Traders. I've watched some matches from other players. I think Six Soul Lands is honestly wrong, and I understand that it's so good when you're running Defense Grid and Ruby Medallion, but a majority of the time I've been running into players online in my own matches where they're getting color screwed. They can't actually make red mana because they're running six Soul Lands in their deck with only 13 lands in it. So, I mean, everything comes at a cost. When you're not running six Soul Lands, you lose a little bit of that explosive speed. That said, I'm fine with the increased stability and red sources, especially when we're running all these terrific cards. Uh, so yeah, I think we've covered the main deck. A lot of lists recently have been bumping up to four grid, which I love. For a long time, Ruby only had two, now we're seeing four. And I would be running four in the main deck today if I wasn't running Wish. In the board, uh, there's only one copy of Grape Shot now because Grape Shot isn't necessarily a card we have to board in due to having Wish in our deck. You can just rely on these two effects to beat Meddling Mage or Surgical, whatever. Uh, you don't really need to board in that extra wing con. And if you want to, you can always just side in the empty or side in the creep shot itself. Uh, obviously, Echo and Pure are just terrific cards. We play them in the Epic Storm. It's worth noting that Wish does not play favorably with Echo, but it does with Galvanic Relay, Pass and Flames, Reforge, etc. Uh, Faithless Looting was the last card in the board today. I haven't actually personally ran this card in the list yet. I know that uh, our friend Tony Scaponi does run it. I figured I'd give it a shot today. This is the only slot that I am not confident in. Relay is here to board in two against control decks. So that way, essentially, we have five protection spells against blue. And this isn't a true protection spell, but it does help us overload the opponent. I would honestly be looking to maybe board out a few mocks in for the relay. Um or maybe the Reforge, if they're your, uh, like a heavy Hull Breacher, Narset deck, etc. It just gives you some options. 
And then, you know, just generic good cards down here. EE is our answer to Deafening Silence. You could run Rip Apart and then switch the Islet to Sunbait Canyon. I don't have strong opinions on this. Uh, I'm just letting you know that is an option. But when I've ran the white, the white hasn't come up a whole lot. So I'm trying to stick to a more traditional Ruby list today. That's the deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. And now for a little bit of shilling. Hey, we have memberships. I just added in a little bit of extra to that Stormtrooper tier. Now, if you become a Stormtrooper, you get two free cyborg guides every month tacked onto all your other bonuses and you know benefits from being a member. So if you wanna up your level, that's where you go. I will make you cyborg guides every single month. You get two of them. It's just great value. For the $5 tier, you still get emotes and badges. We actually just uploaded another emote because I hit another tier. I need five more people to hit that next tier, so we might be waiting a little bit, but you have six badges and emotes. Go check those out. And if you're interested, you can always just go directly to theepicsroom.com slash shop and get your combo merchandise and card singles there. You can also submit it a donation deck. It's a great way of supporting this channel. See your combo deck featured here on the Epic Storm. And as always, make sure to like, comment, and if you're not already, subscribe. It's the easiest way of supporting us, and it's absolutely free. Help us get into the YouTube algorithm. It would be greatly appreciated. I hope we do well today. I think that Wish actually has, out of all the decks that I've played this week with Wish, Ruby probably has the most potential here in Ruby Storm. I actually see this sticking around for quite a long time. I'm not sure if it's going to cut the uh, the line in the other two Storm decks. It's probably good enough for Twiddle, maybe for Gifts, but I think it's going to be good here in Ruby. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in match number one. Welcome to match number one. We're on the play. Let's kick this video off. All right, so we don't have an action spell. We do have a turn one grid. Um, I think we're probably supposed to just ship this, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I think we're supposed to bottom a seething song because we have guaranteed turn two good stuff. But it really depends on what our opponent's doing. So turn one mountain we could be anything our opponent is probably thinking right now brent cook isn't playing storm what and then they're gonna get got hopefully all right turn one so, ooh we could have went and got echo there i don't think that was the right call because we theoretically could have uh appeared next turn and that's why i didn't but if you go get echo there it's not wrong it's just Pier is a lot more deterministic. That said, we would have had to draw some mana for it as well. Okay, so we drew a mountain that we didn't need. I'm just going to play out our artifacts so that way if we get hemmed or something like that, it doesn't really matter. You could argue that a land in hand would be better than a petal. Um, are they in depths? Reanimator. Okay. Getting grizzled. Yeah, do your thing. If I had known I was facing Reanimator, I definitely would have gotten Echo, but uh, say La Vie. Right, now would be a great time to draw a Wish. I'm just gonna have six. It's fine. All right, so come on, Doc. If they're on the children list, we're probably just dead. We got Chancellor. Okay, so we can still win this. It's not out of the question. Burning Wish or Wish off the top give us, you know, a lot of options here. Come on, Thought Seize me. Make it easy. Cast Thought Seize. You know I have the Seething Song. Just cast it. And... They're going to do it. There we go. Now Wish and Burning Wish both win the game easily. We have six cards that just flat out win. Can we draw one of them? Our odds are already better due to a card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms being added to our deck. Come on, Dungeons and Dragons. Be there. Be there. 
Um, that doesn't do it. <laughs> um, guess I cast this and pay the one. I mean, we're not dead. We could still theoretically win. But it's not looking good. Okay. Looting, of course. They're probably going to put another Chancellor into the graveyard this turn. And if they were wise, they wouldn't activate the Gristlebrand because then it makes it just like almost impossible for me to win. Okay. Did not swing with Chancellor. That's interesting. Maybe they're planning on drawing seven then? And they are. Okay. We can still win this. Her kind of cruelty? Wow. That's going to hurt us quite a bit. Yep, so Archon's going to come into play. We'll sacrifice Burgie, lose three life, they'll draw a card. And now I think we're actually dead. This is not stock and reanimator. I think that this is just our opponent's like spice slot. And our odds of winning just went drastically down. I think we'd have to draw like exactly Echo here. Uh, Wish doesn't do it. Ruby's certainly not going to do it. And we'll be on to game two. So a little bit of a bummer. Um, not a whole lot. I mean, we could have preemptively gotten Echo. I don't think that was right, though. And now we get to board out Grid and then board in Relay, which is a card we're going to want to find. Uh, you could board in, like, a Looting, but I think I'm just going to do the all-in Relay play. And what's nice about Relay is in matchups where you don't want Grid, you have a real card now, which is something that we didn't have previously, just extra action being added in. So I do like to see that. And I'm just going to click Submit. Friendly reminder, if you don't have your set, make sure you get a mini token pack from the epicstorm.com slash shop. We're down to about 20 to 22 of these. So they are selling. Once these are gone, we're going to get a brand new mini token pack. So if you want the original mini token pack, make sure to pick them up while they're still in stock. I can't guarantee that they're gonna be in stock for much longer. So head over to theepicstorm.com slash shop and get yours. For $12, you get 54 mini tokens. You get 20 storm, 10 black, 10 red, five blue, three of the rest. And you get 54 goblin tokens on the back. 54, your empty the warrants are going to love it. And they're mini, like I said, they're half the size of a standard Magic the Gathering card, and you can grab those at theepicsroom.com slash shop. Game number two on the play against Reanimator. Hmm. Do I keep this? We can actually fight through a Chancellor, uh, but we'd have to draw action. I think I'm probably supposed to just mulligan. It's tempting. Um, this is not a feel good, but they mulliganed. Let's hope uh, they at least keep five. All right, well, they're down to five. It stinks because that just makes Jessica's well worse. Uh, one thing that I personally do whenever I'm facing uh, Reanimator is that another thing that thinks is we're putting the card to the graveyard for them is I aggressively mulligan uh, quite often against them because it just Jessica's Will is the best card in Ruby and if more people aggressively mulligan this deck gets worse it's just like how it is um, so we're going to reforge and then put their creatures in the graveyard <laughs> and give them a new seven so this Jessica's Will is pretty risky um, to say the least. Come on, Jessica's. So we got the Echo, that was great. Um, I'm gonna imprint Relay here. I think I'd rather have Wish in the deck. So now we can actually get rid of the cards we put to their um, hand, which is nice. High Storm Count, I'm gonna leave a blue floating. I think it's pretty free. Um, is there any way that I would get burned by needing red red? I don't think so. Okay. Um, so Wish here is a little awkward. We can go see things on Wish, but we don't actually have a two mana payoff that works well here. Uh, we could Grape Shot for like 
what, uh, how much is that? 12, so that it would shut off reanimate? Is that even good? I don't know. You could also Faithless Looting, but I think shutting off reanimate's probably a little bit better. <sighs> this is a weird spot to be in. I guess if that uh, wish was a relay, I don't know if it would have been that one. But if it was a relay, I'd be in a much better spot here. Okay, looting. They're at seven. I'm trying to think of what our best draw would be, and I honestly don't know. I guess it would be another reforge. Uh, we have two in the deck. We can miracle a reforge. They discarded Gristle. Joke's on you, I don't have any non-laying cards. Grief is accurate, it must be what you're feeling right now. Get out of here. All right. Miracle. All right, so Fiery Islet looking pretty good right here. We're gonna draw an extra card on their end step so they can't discard it. And next turn we'll have two fresh cards. Maybe we can do something with it. Another looting. Like I said, it's worth noting reanimate is shut off unless they want to reanimate grief. Uh, that is an option for our opponent. Okay, they have the dark rat. In tune. Oh. They're, yeah. We are straight out locked to Iona. It's uh, not a very popular card anymore either. Can we beat that? I don't think so. Uh, Iona versus the Modern Red deck, pretty good. <laughs> Let's see what would have happened had I drawn an action, or if had we, you know, done our thing. So we wouldn't have drawn anything anyway. All right, uh, so we're going to start this league off 0 and 1. Sort of a bummer uh, that we didn't get there, but we got to do some cool stuff in game 2. Wish was at least cast. I mean, Burning Wish wouldn't have been any better there. But it is what it is. I'll see you in match number two. Okay, match number two. Once again, we're on the play. Um, This is one mana short of the back half of Burgi. Think I'm going to keep. We can play Burgi on turn two, uh, which isn't the worst. So let's just hope that our opponent isn't on a blue deck. And uh, maybe not a turn one reanimator player. <laughs> Uh, so right before I was about to go live, I realized that I must have wanted that win in match number one more than I thought because I put down that I won when it clearly I didn't and uh, messed with me a little bit. That's a bummer. Uh, so not expecting the horn side of Burgi to resolve here. Um, let's see if this resolves. Okay, so we're going to burn some mana and play horn here. And I'm not going to play out the opal because I actually want to discard opal. Uh, if I have to pay for days or something, it's going to stink. But it's better to have this in hand to discard than possibly losing it to having to pay for days from the basic island. All right, so that's a good sign. Um, I think I'm just going to pass. I could like be a little bit aggressive here and try to just like aggro discard i don't think that's necessary i can just better use the cards off the top next turn when i have additional mana interesting that horn resolved though Ugh. yeah bummer i knew it was a possibility i even thought about petty theft too when i passed okay that was a good draw it does help when you have four of them in your dock. You gonna daze it? Are we trading two for two this time? We are. We're a folk trickster. It's odd. Okay. We're looking for a miracle from our side. Is our opponent just like on mono blue? That's what it could be. 
It is looking very bluish. Merfolk with Brazen Borrower? That's what it is. It is Merfolk. Take the draw. Not a miracle. But let's see if we can draw something because if I do it now, this Rite of Flame is quite a bit of mana. So we can actually hit a decent payoff here. Fiery Islet says, Wish! Okay. So Rite of Flame is going to make four. I could empty. Um, one has two cards in hand. If I wait a turn, I can actually likely pass in flames. They are going to have dock hand, so I don't know if it's actually any better. So Rite of Flame makes four. Yeah, we're just one mana short. All right, I'm going to pass. I know they get one more look at finding interaction, but I don't think relay is worth it. I don't really want to empty. I think that if I just can get wish to resolve next turn, I likely have a really awesome past in flames line. And I don't know how much the dock hand actually matters. Okay. So they still have two in hand and a brazen borrower that they can cast. They're going to tap our mountain here. Yep. And the draw is Ruby Medallion. Okay. Ruby was a pretty good draw here. Because it enables Metalcraft, uh, makes our spells cost less, so now Wish is just burning Wish, essentially. Uh, and now I can see that this resolves, and I don't have to crack the diamond. Does this resolve? It resolved. Okay, so I can get past in flames, but my fear with getting past in flames is that it needs to resolve. Our opponent paused, so if I wanted to, I could reforge here. I think that's one of the worst options. I could Galvanic Relay for five, which would help beat a uh, possible counter spell in their hand. But let's think about this. If Wish were, or if Past in Flames were to resolve, um, I can float a red with Opal, Past in Flames with the LED mana, and then I would go right, 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 Seething Song, Wish into Empty? Is that a line that I want to do? That's Empty for 20 almost? Probably a little bit more, so Past in Flames would be five, six, seven. So it'd be lethal. It's probably worth it. And then if they don't have Force of Negation, we can maybe flash back Past in Flames in a turn or two. Okay, so that resolved. Let's see things song. And then Wish. Let's leave some rights in the graveyard in case this Wish gets countered. And I did not. Um, okay. So... I think it'd be smart here to, so empty is going to cost three, that'll bring me down to five. Uh, I should flashback past in flames here for the extra storm, because 24 is likely to kill them, where with 22, they're, they'll get an extra turn. So empty here, and hopefully they don't have something crazy like a main deck echoing truth. And Wish here was considerably better than a Manamorphose, I would like to point out. Uh, we just have more real action spells in our deck, which is something we wanted to draw in our first round. We lost round one because we didn't draw action spells. Wish was a live out where Manamorphose wasn't. And here, Wish is, you know, creating a horde of goblin tokens. And if you were playing in paper, you'd be busting out your mini token pack right now, turning those tokens upside down and uh, showing your horde. All right, they chose not to play Brazen Borrower there. That was kind of interesting. And they're just going to concede. Woot woot, we've gotten game number one for Merfolk. Um, I don't even know if we board. <laughs> uh, you could board in Relay. Uh, I'm not against it. Maybe it's better than Reforge against the uh, the blue deck. Let's try this out. I'm not against relaying. Gives us a little bit more protection against blue decks. If they're on Merfolk, they could have Hull Breacher. 
and it's a way of hedging against Hull Breacher a little bit. I do like that. And if you look at the way this deck is actually constructed now, against Hull Breacher, we have five spells. We just boarded out two of them. So there's three targets in the main deck. Uh, Manamorphose used to be a target. Now it's not because it's just a wish. So we're making the deck less weak to Hull Breacher style effects, which is always just a nice benefit. I know that uh, Tony recently went back to playing a Tendrils in the sideboard. I'm not a big fan of Tendrils, but if you wanted to run it, you could run it over that Faithless Looting slot. I think Relay just does a lot of what the Wishboard used to want. So you would run effects like Looting or um, what is it called? The four mana Act on Impulse that you can use later. Um, ignite Mem It's Ignite something ignite the memories something like that uh but relay just does all of these things better uh so relay's cleaning up a lot of that and maybe you don't need faithless looting when you're running a bunch of relays on the board that was my point uh let's try this out though i'm gonna taking a mulligan all right and they're keeping six lovely island from lorwyn Diamond. Turn two, we're going to slam a grid. Hopefully it will be good enough. I also think that if Merfolk is going to play Rashad and Dockhand, they should lean into the Mana Denial package. They should be running Port, Wasteland, uh, Days. They're not doing any of this stuff, so I feel like the Dockhand just isn't working as well as it could be. Because uh, like, think about how Goblins works. And... That framework existed for a long time for Merfolk 2, and then just Merfolk got away from it. And I feel like with Dakia and they should go back to it. It would just work really well for them. Play Grid. I could play out Diamond to like theoretically play around Days. I don't think that's worthwhile. Um, it's just, I would never discard my hand anyway. And if I sit on this Diamond, next turn I can go Ritual Burgy, Diamond, make a red. And maybe uh, if I draw another Rite of Flame or something, we're in a, we're in business to do something broken. So you're just losing mana by playing Diamond there. All right, what is it, Doc? What is it? Is it something good? I'll take that. That is actually a, a pretty good draw. And, and yeah, nothing else to say about that. It's just it makes a red mana. This is actually plus two mana here. And we can imprint the second copy of Burgi and just go to town. We don't have five mana, so we can't really abuse the back half anyway. Um, so something I can do here, which is super nice, and Alex McKinley talked about it in our video, is... Uh, actually, do I have enough mana for that? Three mana, this would... No, I'm, I'm short one mana. That's a bummer. I thought we were going to be able to cast Wish and Burning Wish and leave this Wish in exile, uh, but that is not the case here. Unfortunately, we're short one. Hmm. So we would get a red. Yeah, it just doesn't work the way that I want it to. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll just cast Wish here. Use the mana floating, why not? And then we're going to get Echo. And let's try to go to town. I think I might leave blue blue floating here. Because Echo is going to make a red with Burgi anyway. So this way if we draw an Echo we could theoretically hard cast it. Leaving ourselves with just a little bit more options. So why not? Okay. Let's think about this. Um, so we can song here. It's still leaving blue blue. And this is what I talked about too, with not needing to use Jeska as well as a super ritual uh, when you have more seedling songs in your deck. I think it's probably pretty free to play this grid at some point, but let's start off on the wills in case we break on a bunch of action spells. Jeska's will. Okay, that was really good. Um, okay, and now we can do this again. All the mana. All right, I think we probably have this one. What we really need is a Thassa's Oracle on the board to 
uh, be infinite life, right? Um, because you could relay your entire deck away, wish for Oracle. Missed opportunities and instead we're playing this dumb Faithless Looting we're never going to cast. All right, let's play Grid because it's free to do so. Um, Chromox makes some mana so we can just play that. Look at that, just Mox Ruby, don't even need to tap it. Let's just as well. All right, what is in there? A little late Ruby Medallion. A little bit late. All right, so this is Storm 17 Wishes from 18. We're gonna have to relay in a non showboating manner because uh, I don't know how else we're going to get the 20th Storm for Rape Shop. So they get to see the goods. All right. So, um, I think I can F6 here because we have mana floating. I haven't told that the mana floating part with the, the doesn't empty this part, this mana down here will not stop you. That said, uh, we have the blue mana floating, which should stop it from passing. And uh, we got it. So cool, cool, cool. I'll see you in match number two. Our record is actually updated this time. I realized that I messed it up again last round. We are one and one heading into round number three and we have won our third die roll in a row. Let's see if we can create some magic. All right, so we have six mana, which is not enough to go grid into reforge. Um, so I think what I'll do here is I'll just go ancient tomb grid pass and hopefully that will be good enough. Not really sure what our opponent's playing. I haven't been looking up our opponent's decks on Goldfish this league. I'm just kind of playing Magic the Gathering, seeing where it goes. Defense grid. A long pause here. Could mean Force of Will. Not really sure what our opponent's up to. Drown in the Lock. Okay. So we were able to eat two counter spells with that defense grid. One thing uh, about playing Ruby is that uh, I'm I'm normally playing the Epic Storm, so people tend to dig for counter spells against me anyway. So we're not surprising anyone with you know our mono red shenanigans. Your opponent's casting a ponder, thinking about it a little bit, likely looking for that next counter spell. Drown in the Lock was a spicy one, so not really sure what they're playing, uh, but it's some sort of control deck. We know that much. Okay. Be good. That's probably fine. Um, so we need this right to resolve. Okay. Do I think that empty is good enough? Probably not. And if I had to have one of these resolve, I think it's... Well, like either way, the business spell I cast is going to get forced. So I think it's better to... Yeah, so they found a second force. Um, I'm just going to cast this now. Why not? And I'm just going to get explosives. This could theoretically be an artif artifact for Metalcraft. I don't know how else I'd cast this wish. We burned so many resources right there. And them just having the double force uh, was pretty brutal. Ideally, we would have had one more mana that turn, and I could have played Wishes of Eight spell. I don't know. Like, we also could have waited, but I don't think allowing our opponent more time to dig for force is the right move. Okay. Pretty far behind at the moment. If I had to guess, this is likely some sort of Stoneblade variant, which is why I decided not to empty, and instead I put cast the Reforge. That crossed my mind that there's a pretty high probability they're a Culture Complete deck. And their hand is probably just all action. Burning Lash. Ooh. Thought sees that. Long pause before we switch phases here. Mm. 
Okay. What is this? Uh, blowout. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we could Burning Wish for Chain Lightning to kill a Breacher. Sort of rough. Our opponent just had the goods this game. It's worth noting that if the Reforges were relays, we would have crushed our opponent this game one. Like, it's entirely possible that the two Reforges in our main deck should just be Galvanic Relay. Because it gives us more ways of just, like, didn't, like crushing blue ducks and not losing to force. God damn you, old breacher. All right. We'll just go to game two. I'm not going to sit here and just slowly die to old breacher. Let's bring in the relays. I'm going to leave one in the board. Just do the same swap that I did before. We could board in explosives for deafening silence. I think I'm just going to accept losing to deafening silence instead of having a bad card in my deck. Um, I mean, I could change it. If I were to board in explosives, I'd probably board out an opal and a chrome mox. But like, we're also boarding in relays, so I want the zeros. Yeah, I'm just going to lose the deafening silence. It's fine. If they have it, they have it. More often than not right now, the more popular card tends to be Aether Sworn Cannonist. Deafening silence is a little bit out of favor at the moment but nothing stopping our opponents from playing it uh, or deafening silence, so all that good stuff. Friendly reminder, if you want to stay up to the date on the latest and greatest storm action, open up that description down below. There you will find seven social media channels. I would personally recommend the Discord. A lot of great combo conversation happening in there. Great community, great people. Make sure to join. Game two on the play. This seems delightful. I will keep. And our opponent's taking a mulligan here. Okay. We're going to start off on Ancient Tomb into Ruby Medallion. I think I would rather this get forced than the defense grid. So, okay, that resolved. Not bad. So they don't care about Ruby Medallion or they didn't have a force. Okay, no thoughtsies. I'm going to play a pedal here to avoid a possible spell pierce. What about grid? It's worth noting that our opponent is playing white, so they could just let grid resolve untap and cast prismatic ending. That is a possibility here. All right, they're tapping C for a brainstorm. Maybe if we had slammed the grid on turn one, uh, we wouldn't be in this situation. Or maybe they just want to get a little bit of brainstorm equity before they pitch a different blue card to force. I don't know. I think we're likely going to be trying to use Jessica's will as the act on impulse ability next turn. Ooh, okay. Does defense grid get to stick around though? That's the question. Music Island. Let's see it. No white source. No, they have a white source. Okay. Uh, him? Yeah. Okay. You've him me. Now we're down to just Fiery Islet is our action spell. Our action land. Hmm. Let's see if I can draw something good here. We have the song. Nope. Would have loved uh, an Echo of Aeons there. Could have really broken this game wide open. Okay. So now they have three mana. They can hold up Force of Will. Uh, they could play a Hull Breacher here. Still, they chose not to do white mana. Herod Mesa. That can't be correct. There are four colors? There's Breacher. So Echo will shut off at this point. Um, but we have other options via our seven wishes that we could possibly draw here. No dice. Okay. Yeah, there's no way. That, I guess if they are a, technically a red-white deck. They have Tundra in there. 
They have Volcanic Island. I just, I can't imagine that Mesa is right here. Go some fetch Underground Sea in your Hymnotorok deck. Ponder from the opponent. I mean, Galvanic Relay is not really a card we want. Um, I mean, it'd be fine here, but it'd essentially just be a divination. They're giving us a window. If we could draw one of our wishes, we can, you know, maybe break this game open. Honestly, Wish would be better here than Burning Wish, because we could possibly do some Past and Flame stuff with it. Sure. Okay. What is the draw going to be? Come on, Doc. There it is, Wish. Okay, so let's think through this. They're at 15. So we can go get past in flames and then Seething Song, Jessica's Will. Reforge is off the table right now. So I think we could look into relaying again, uh, like a larger relay after a past in flames. Okay, so we can't draw a card, so Echo and Pier are off the table. Yeah, I think it's just got to be Past in Flames. So we Past in Flames, we can Seething Song. And then we have a sort of a choice to make with this Jeska as well. We can try to, we can use it as a Desperate Ritual to make one mana. Or we can try to act on impulse. And I think act on impulse is probably the play here. It's a little bit risky uh, because if we miss, we can't do a whole lot of good. Um, Burgie is interesting. So the bad part about Burgie here is we don't have that much mana. Hmm. So I could go Burgie into Burning Wish and the Grape Shot and wipe their board. Maybe that's the play, because I still get Wish Past in Flames in the graveyard. Yeah, I think that's probably the best line here. Oh, I forgot that it cost one less. Okay. Um, I forgot about that. So we can actually play Grid here, too. I don't think there's a way to make us go plus mana. So if I get Grape Shot and then Wish, because Wish should cost two. And then Relay would be two. So we would need an effect here that could make us go plus one mana. Yeah, I don't think there's like a zero we could get. So this is going to be for seven. Actually cancel. We can do an extra damage by playing the grid first. Okay, and then target them. Strix, Tuyet Breacher, and then the rest at them. And we will not be able to flash back Wish this turn, but we still have Past and Flames for Wish as a backup. And now we're in a really good spot. We have double uh, defense grid. We have Burgie. They're at 10. We could actually attack them to death with our 3-3. That is on the table. They have four cards in hand. Uh, we did see Drowned in the Lock, unfortunately. That is a card that could kill Burgie here. It's looking pretty likely. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see another Seething Song off the top. Or I'd take a Reforge at this point. Oh no, we boarded those out. Those wouldn't do anything. So we have no mana. So at this point, we really want to find that Seething Song. Uh, that would be Storm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'd need to do a little bit more after that. Taking a long time. They might be casting like a Gurmag here. I'm trying to figure out what the long pause is. Um, did they really just Surgical Grape Shot? <laughs> sure. It's the only one... Uh, in our 75. So I guess theoretically we can empty to win. Um, 
Tony is always talking about how there's a way to deck your opponent with Pier into the Abyss. Maybe we could figure that out. <laughs> Maybe I think we might need the main deck relays or the main deck reforges for that though. Oh, they also didn't remove the grape shot. Oh wow. Not good. But this is a very good draw for us because it's going to make Wish and Past and Flames considerably cheaper. Opponent only has five land, so even a Force of Will here would not get the job done uh, after this brainstorm. And they could go land six and then next turn hold open a, uh, a Force of Will, but it's not gonna do anything right this instance. And I have no idea what the Red Four is in their deck. It could be like a Pyroblast. Uh, not really sure. Two cards in hand for the opponent. And another Brainstorm without fetching. So their cards on top must have been at least okay. So Flashback Pass in Flames is going to cost three mana now due to the Pair of Ruby Medallion. Wish will cost one. So that's four mana. But then we don't have any mana to do anything else. So we'd still really, really like to draw a Seething Song here. That would break this uh, hand wide open. We could Seething Song. Flashback Pith, Wish, Reforge, and then we just like go bananas. Okay, second brainstorm is resolved. Going to nine. Yeah, maybe this looting should just be a tendrils. A nice thing that you could do with Wish that I just thought of is you could run a single cyborg Blood Moon, and against people like this, you just and their whole careers with that blood moon that'd be a pretty good thing so that faithless looting slot could be a blood moon if you didn't want to want to run tendrils uh just throwing that out there what is this how dare you go after my ruby medallion that is just rude um i think i like the back half more here let's play horn past the turn How dare you? It also uh, gives us a sign that they likely don't have Force of Will. So they took a draw here, and even if they have the, the sixth land for Force, because that's what they would need for the double defense grid, they wouldn't have a blue card in hand. They would need three cards in hand here uh, to represent Force, and that's after they played one, which would be a land. Blood Moon seems really awesome out of the board, though. So we've seen what white's for, at least Disenchant. I think that's the first white card we've seen. But we're still not sure about red. The opponent's taking a long time here. I wonder if they have, like, Snapcast or Disenchant or something, and they're trying to figure out what the target is. Okay. Um... <laughs> I mean, that's a good card to discard to Horn. I just don't, we don't have a blue, we don't have any blue mana right now. And on top of that, they'll get to uh, have six mana. So we have the land here. I mean, I don't think it's worth flashing back past in flames. I think we just pass. Played a little bit conservatively. So now our opponent could have Force Blue card. Diamond. Okay. Well, if they have Force Blue card, they have it. Okay, well, that was resolved very, very quickly. Um, Ruby Medallion? What about this Burge? One mana, three, three. What up? The best wild in the coddle. Also makes mana. Okay. Um, maybe I shouldn't have done both of those. Let's discard Echo to Horn. That was good. Okay. We're going to be able to overpower any force that our opponent might have here. Let's move this. I like my stack being over here. Okay. 
We know that the wish is, or the grape shot's in the main deck, so if we want to win using that, we have to find it. I could wish for the sideboard uh, defense grid, just to make sure that our opponent doesn't do anything. This wish is also completely free, it doesn't cost me anything. Okay, so our opponent's just F6. Let's flash back. And we're going to be able to see most of our deck. Um, yep. Just have to find the grape shot. I guess we could also peer. Although peer at this point isn't going to draw a whole lot of cards. Uh, let's add blue. Blue. Card cast this echo. We're just going to draw our deck. It'll be fine. Yeah, we can literally draw the rest of our deck. Horn is a powerful card. And there's the grape shot. The blammo. It is nice with uh, Ruby, once you get going, just that you're going to do ridiculous things like draw your entire deck. It's a lot of fun. I'm trying to think if I want to change anything. I think the answer is no. I'm just going to resubmit. And I think having mana in the deck is still correct and not boarding in the explosives. That said, I obviously didn't lose to a Cannonist or Deafening Silence or anything like that. Let's try it out. Keep. Uh-oh. Resolve? I'd like it if this resolved. Pitching Strix. Hmm. So it's worse because Jusk as well is not going to make that much mana next turn. So I thought about using it to accelerate into a horn. I'm not sure if that's the best play anymore. What I'm thinking here, do they have like a surgical for defense grid? All right, now they're passing the turn. Okay. I think I'm going to play it a little bit conservatively here, and I'm just going to pass, and then next turn, hard cast uh, Horn. Like, I could burn the Jessica's Will, but why? Like, what do we gain by doing that? All right, now we have to respect Hull Breacher a little bit here. Wish is a good draw. Drown in the lock, that. A... So I, what I could do here is I could discard my hand, start digging for Echo, but I'm pretty sure they had a Hull Breacher. Like that was just like so obvious that they had a Breacher there. Why play into that? Especially when we can just use Horn next turn to beat Breacher. When we have more mana, like untapping with five mana is just gonna be devastating. Okay. Uh, let's start off by getting rid of this Crow Mox. Okay, I like to see this. Burge. Here are the Jessicas. Okay, let's cast this. I don't know if they have removal, um, but the fact that Burgey just makes a bunch of mana makes it pretty valuable to me. Okay, so that resolved. Hmm. I think I'm going to cast Wish rather than the Burning Wish uh, because I can use Lion's Eye, Di Lion's Eye Diamond mana on the Burning Wish. And another thought that's in my head is I could get Chain Lightning with Wish or I could use the Grape Shot. And I think that it's better to use Grape Shot just so that way uh, like a Drawn and Lock or something doesn't hold me back. Also wondering if like maybe do I even need to answer uh, the whole breacher? That's another consideration. Taking a long time on everything. I feel like they have a drowned and lock in hand. Does this wish resolve? Okay, so wish resolved. Um, what about this wish? 
We could also have like double breacher maybe. Uh, that's something that I could be playing into. Okay, so with that red floating, I'm going to activate this fiery islet and then discard whatever I drew to horn. Oh, the breacher's in play. Oh, I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. <sighs> yep, and now a counterspell hurts me here. <laughs> uh, I guess not, uh, because I have two wishes that resolve. Um, so it's actually free for me to chain lightning here, because if they force it, it just like doesn't do anything. Um, so it's free for me to kill the breacher. <sighs> Still sort of dumb of me to fire your islet into the onboard all breacher though. <laughs> they can actually, um, fetch for volcanic here and then copy the chain lightning and kill my burgey. I just thought of that. But they didn't. Um, so if I cast Burning Wish here. So I'm going to go up to five mana. If I got past in flames, does that actually do anything meaningful? I think the answer is no. But it's like, it doesn't really hurt to do so. So I think I'm going to do it. Because even if this gets countered, I can still grape shot. I mean, it's not a great play, but it's something I can still do. Interesting. Okay, so I'm just going to grape shot them for 11 and pass. And the next turn, I can flash back. Um, pass in flames, most likely. It's been an interesting game. That punch on the... Uh, the islet definitely cost me. All right, so they're gonna take 11 here and go to eight, and we have a three, three in play. They still have more life than us because of our ancient dooms. <laughs> You're on unlock. Baleful Strix. It's probably a Baleful Strix. Okay, they chose not to get a red source here. Liliana? Vindicate? Toxic Deluge, okay. And Baleful Strix. So their last two would need to be Forest Blue card if we drew mana. I think it's going to go... Uh, get discarded i mean ruby's fine it's just not good enough right here and we drew another one i'm a genius uh that said this actually doesn't allow us to cast past and blames this turn i mean we could cast it it just wouldn't do anything um so we just have to discard and this baleful strix is actually going to shut off one of the ancient tombs so it being a one power creature is somewhat relevant here Okay, now they have two cards up, which could be counter spells. Echo is a great reveal here. Another ruby. Um, Storm is zero. Um, so I think playing this is wrong because I would have to tap Ancient Tomb, and then this Ancient Tomb becomes shut off, and Past and Flames becomes three, doesn't do anything. But if I just tap this into Pith, they have to counter. Yeah, I think that this is just a better line. Ancient Tomb is being, it's very relevant right now, though, that we could end up dying uh, due to the tombs. Looks like they have the counter spell. Could be Surgical. All right, so they went for Grape Shot. And they didn't exile. Am I a big enough jerk to 
punish them for that? I think the answer is yes. I am, in fact, a jerk. Um, and they're just going to concede, so I didn't even have to do it. But yes, I am a jerk. Uh, we're 2-1 and one now. That was an interesting round, to say the least. Uh, I don't think I played it perfectly by any means. Our opponent, uh, you know, they might be new to Legacy. Not everyone's going to make optimal plays all the time. It doesn't mean anything. We all learn at a different rate. Sometimes some of us have more experience than others. Don't be mean about it. It happens. Uh, but we're going to round number four. Hopefully you stick around. I'll see you there. Maybe. We're on a roll with die rolls. Four in a row for round number four. Let's see if uh, maybe we can squeak out another victory here. The all-in Burgie hand. Love it. I'm going to keep this. <clears throat> so one copy of Burgie will be imprinted to Crow Mox. Uh, the other one will be cast this turn. And if they have a force... Oh, they just snap resolved. Okay. <laughs> uh, that means that next turn we can play back-to-back -back copies of Diamond into Horn and uh, maybe have some spells to cast. Is this Dredge? Uh, okay. So we're mana short right now of playing Horn. And that gives us Horn mana. So they're likely on five color depths. Hap's depths, as I like to call it, for our good friend Tom Hap. Or as Tom likes to call it, which I think is a lame name, Rainbow Depths. Nothing against rainbows. It just reminds me of like what every five-year-old kid calls their five-color deck is all. Um, let's get in there. City of Brass. The story is lining up. What are we going to draw? Ruby. Oh, well, Ruby's going to be discarded. We are not in need of mana at the moment. Islet. This actually seems like a time where we can draw off Islet for once and uh, not get a hold Richard. Boom! What a draw! I think Tom Hep is not going to be happy with this one. Um, pretty free to cast this. What is this? Boo! I mean, it's fine. We can still cast the one that's in exile. <laughs> um, add a whole bunch of red mana. Six red, one from Burgi, five from Jessica's. And now we'll add three blue, which actually works out pretty well um, because it's two to hard cast and then another one to flashback later. So we're going to see like 28 cards off of this one echo. Um, which is kind of cool. I guess Ruby Medallion is fine enough. Tony's probably screaming right now, like, no, you should be discarding that. You always want to seize 28 cards off your Echoes or something. I'm sorry to be a disappointment to you, Tony. Um, but I think we probably have this game regardless. When I played Ruby with Tony, Tony is very adamant about how you never cast spells. You only discard them to Horn. Okay. So many mana. All right, now we'll flash back Echo. Make more red mana. Opal is pretty free here. Oh, no, I'm supposed to be discarding that. I'm sorry, Tony. I'm sorry. Please don't yell at me. All right, well, I am casting the ruby because I want to um, deal with it. I don't know. This uh, Seething Song is literally free, makes six red. I guess the one upside of uh, playing Tendrils is that I could stop showboating and just win. I mean, I love showboating, don't get me wrong. But uh, I would also like to start processing this video before midnight. Let's get Peer into the Abyss. All right, our opponent's finally going to concede to Peer. Cool. Uh, the grids are actually fine because five colored ups boards into Flusters, and uh, Fluster, you know, is not very good against defense grids. So I think we're actually going to keep our deck configuration as is 
and uh, run it back. Hit that submit button right there. Once again, stay up to date, join our social groups, especially the Discord. Just do it. It's in the description down below, all seven links. Just open it, join us. This hand is bad. We're going to ship this. This is fine. Get rid of the burge. Just burge is too much mana. Um, what stinks about this hand is we're pretty weak to a discard spell, and our opponent has one, which isn't shocking. This deck plays, I think, like six discard spells main, so they're fairly likely to, likely to have one. I think the actual pick here is diamond. Let's see if they take it, though. You could argue that it's supposed to be Rite of Flame as well. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, but Rite of Flame would stop you from casting Ruby Medallion or Burning Wish on turn one. And they chose Jessica as well. That's interesting. I think I'm just going to echo here. So part of the reason why is I don't want to play into Force of Vigor, and I could just like Rite of Flame Ruby pass, but why lose the Force of Vigor? All right, so they have a surgical, and they're hitting our diamond. I mean, it stinks, but we can win with all lines at diamond. Probably not this turn, but we can. And this seems fairly reasonable. Uh, I think it's best to just pass the turn here, though. All right, pedal, herborg. Another thought seize. Always thought seizing. I don't actually know what the right pick is here. Uh, maybe Burgi. Honestly, Right of Flame could be correct here with how little mana we have. If they have a Surgical, they could try to Surgical our Wishes. Or, I mean, Burning Wish, not Actual Wish. That's going to be confusing. And they chose Burgi. I think that was, in my opinion, the strongest take. Okay, um, I think I'm going to go get Relay here. Ooh, I could have also gotten Faithless Looting. That would have been like the only time where Faithless Looting was good all league. <laughs> Our diamonds have gotten removed and I still didn't get Faithless Looting. All right, so they're representing Lethal here with the Crop Rotation. Uh, yeah, we're just going to be dead to a Crop. You have a crop, you have a crop. They did not. Okay. All right, well, now they are representing lethal. Okay. So, I don't know how we win this. One thing I could do is I could play Medallion, Burgi Wish into Looting, but we don't have enough mana to flashback Echo then. Um, I could just go Wish Looting right now, and then we'd have to draw like Soul Land. We'd have four Soul Lances out, or like Chromox plus something else. Hmm. Yeah, not getting that looting actually hurt quite a bit. I think the looting line here off wish is probably the only thing that realistically wins. It's just like fairly low probability, I think. So we hit the soul land. Um... Oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh my god. And I didn't even discard the echo. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's just go to the next game. In my head, I was like, yeah, obviously I'm going to discard Echo. What else am I going to pick? And then just like didn't do it. Ugh. Yeah. I have no excuse. <laughs> I just didn't play well. All right. Let's just try to get game three. Can I keep that? Um, 
I don't know if this is good enough. Our opponent's deciding on their seven. I can like try to mulligan to an LED echo hand, but I don't know if they boarded in ley line. Like it's entirely possible that they did. My fear here is that like we're so far away from uh, horn and the front half of Burgi really doesn't matter. And like Reforge, we don't have Seething Song or Jessica's Will. We also have to not be discarded on turn one. I think that this hand might be a ball again. If my opponent would have kept their hand faster, I probably would have kept this, but now I think I'm actually going to ship it down to five. So when you take forever, uh, that also comes with a cost. They kept their seven. We're going to go to five. Um, I don't think I can keep this before. Sure. I think we keep Burning Wish just because it can get looting. It's going to be a tough game. All right, Gemstone Mine and Two Thought Seas as always. Might as well. Come on, Ec or Diamond. We want Diamond. We already have Echo. A Thought Seas Bug. Now we'll actually get Faithless Looting. Maybe I'll discard Echo next turn. Who knows? We'll find out. You could argue that if I don't rip LED off of it, I probably shouldn't do to Bajuka Bog, but we'll see. Espion stage. It could be hoping holding open Fluster as well. Hmm. We're just gonna get wrecked by a a, uh, a crop. Flashback. So crop rotation exiling our uh, echo it up, just obviously it hurts a lot, but we can't afford to play around it on our mulligan to four. So, and they had surgical. So even if we found diamond off the looting, they would have gotten us there. We found the blue sources. Um, we'll just discard those. I think wish is probably better than some additional mana sources. When it's on four cards. I don't even know what we would get with Wish. Okay. Uh, crop rotation kills us. I think I just have to pass here. So if I hold this and then we do like get another land next turn, I can Galvanic Relay for three. Um, but I'm also like sort of getting the vibe that our opponent has a fluster. Oh, they just have crop. And crop rotation is lethal. Okay. No need to uh, make them click through it. We're now two and two. I'll see you in round number five. We came so close to winning every single die roll, but we didn't. We're on the draw. This hand seems fine to me. Uh, I've faced this person recently. I can't remember what they were playing, though. I feel like it's cheating to go back and look. Mox Diamond. Lands. Well, they're certainly making our Jessica's will worse. Okay, lands. Loam, sure. I mean, if they just play stage here, they're representing a Merit Lodge next turn. That's what they do. And another will. Unfortunately, will just like is garbage at the moment. So we're gonna pass. Okay, they reveal depths. So if they cast uh, Loam here, getting back all three, play depths, they would have five cards in hand at the end of the turn. That actually makes our bowls pretty good again. Played Forest. All right, they're going to crop for waste. Yep. Bummer. So our Jessica's Wills now make... Four mana, so two for four is okay. That's like a decent exchange. And a third just as well. Okay. So the plan here is we're going to reforge. All right, just add a bunch of mana. 
you want to be able to cast whatever we draw off this reforge. So many manas. Um, honestly, would it be better to have uh, pass the flames here? <laughs> it might be. It might be safer. Oh, let's link through this. So it's going to cost three. Yeah, it's probably better to pass in flames here. All right, now we can just as will for cards. The Burge. Let's uh, play Burge for the front half. That'll yield to this. Another wish. Um. Yeah, I want the exile ability again. Slide this over. All right, so we didn't hit blue blue for Echo. But we're at storm 13. We might be able to find our way into a lethal grape shot here. Um, trying to think about how we would do that. I could also just like relay for a load. So we have two wishes. They're each plus two cards. So we yeah, it gets us to 17. I just don't know. Uh, like in theory, we could legend roll Burgie and that would be 18. I think I'm supposed to reforge. All right, let's reforge. Make some mana. We both draw seven. We still have this wish uh, for a grape shot. And we just need mana off this and pretty much just like castable spells win this game due to Burgi. Okay, and now Wish. There's more copies of Burning Wish makes this way better in my opinion. Alright, so now we just group shot. I don't know if uh, not having Mana Morphos mattered at all this league to be honest. But I know that I think that Wish was pretty good. So... I'm still fairly confident that I don't want Manamorphose in my Ruby Storm list moving forward. Uh, you don't have to agree with me. That's fine. I realize that my record is also 2-2 two and two and I misplayed a few times. But I think this deck is just better when you have more hammers and less just like filler cards like Manamorphose. Probably don't want the grids. Um, this is one of the awkward parts about running EE is that it doesn't actually answer turn one sphere out of this deck very well. Yeah. You you also could leave in Defense Grid to try to beat possible copies of Mind Break Trap. Trap has been on the decline recently, so I don't know if we need it. But it doesn't hurt to have. And when you only have one Grape Shot, Trap actually matters. Uh, but we could always like wish for Grid before we great shot we just have to build up enough resources and this hand is amazing this is a turn one uh peer which we haven't got to do yet this league so let's hope that our opponent doesn't have it and they've taken a mulligan so i think i'm actually i really like the main deck i don't think i'd change anything with the main deck right now you could maybe run relays over uh reforge to help be blue decks but I think the board is pretty close. I I think I would just consider cutting the looting. That's like the big thing that I would do. All right, right of flame, right of flame. Song? Am I allowed to have song? I'm allowed to have song. Okay. Um, so burning wish would bring me down to four floating petals five. I can peer with one floating. Or I can relay and then Burning Wish for Echo. I think it's probably just better to Peer. I mean, Peer's just like a guaranteed one, assuming that it resolves. Long pause here, I don't like that. And that relay could have been a defense grid. <laughs> okay, does this resolve? 26 cards! You'll love to see it. Okay. You have a Force of Vigor? Is that what that pause was? Four red off the right of flame. Let's make some mana. 
Pro Mox. We can probably imprint or reforge the soul here. I don't think we're going to be needing those. Seething Song. And I'm going to cast a wish for uh, Grid once I get enough mana. If they want to force a vigor, my medallion let them. Uh, this makes a bunch of mana. And I like making bunches of mana. I guess the I guess they would have had a target for uh force of vigor regardless. Yeah. So even if uh I mean, sure. It doesn't matter. Let's cast wish. I do like the uh the built-in mind break protection. Like that's pretty nice. F mind rear trap, that's what I have to say. The way that the Epic Storm works is that we often end up leaving in one copy of uh, Defense Grid in matchups where our opponents could have um, Mind Break, so that way we can play around it. I don't know if we'd ever want Wish to do that sort of line instead because it would allow you to board out your copies of Grid and then always have access to um, Defense grid, but they, that's a five mana defense grid, and TS doesn't make as much mana as Ruby. Like, I don't know. We also didn't, we realistically probably didn't have to beat Mind Break Trap this game because if they had trapped, they would have uh, gotten our peer. Well, that's the league we went 3 2. That was glorious. Uh, let's look at the deck list again. So, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, I don't think I'd change anything about the main deck. You could argue that you want a second copy of Opal over a Chrome, uh, but Opal is pretty unreliable outside of after you drew a bunch of cards, so maybe Chrome is actually correct. I could see a second copy of Fiery Islet just because you do want blue mana for Echo. That did come up, so maybe a second copy of Islet over one of the mountains. And then... I honestly think that this Faithless Saloon should probably be something else. I like the relays. Everything else seemed okay. I don't like Engineered Explosives. I think maybe I would change that. Like, maybe these should be copies of Rip Apart. I don't know. I'd have to think on that one a little bit more. Let me know what you think. Maybe you have stronger opinions on this than I do. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry that I uh, punted away the one game with Echo. Maybe I'll remember next time. Keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.